Okay, now we finally arrived at the, the place where many of you have uh, been eagerly, many of you have eagerly been waiting for, is the subject of overblowing or overbending or whatever it's called these days. I stumbled upon this technique in 1969, 1970, the winter of that year, uh, because I was looking for the notes that are not here on the diatonic harmonica. And I had learned how to draw a bend on the bottom, and I had learned how to blow bend on the top. And since there were still a bunch of notes missing, which was very frustrating to me being a piano player, I thought, well, these notes have to be here on the harmonica somewhere. So I'm just going to try to get them. I'm just going to blow in all sorts of weird ways on this instrument. I'm this 18 year old college kid. What did I know? So I thought, what happens if I try to blow on a note that doesn't bend? Like one of the blows on the bottom of the harmonica. And so I was doing this on a G harp, it turned out. And I'll do it on the C right now. A blowing on the sixth hole blow, which is G here. And this higher note popped out, of course, not as clearly in 1969-70 as it does now, but it popped out. First, it was sort of fuzzy. It was part of the other note, of another note that, that I was playing. Uh, it was part of this, I can't even do it anymore, but part of the lower note. So uh, it, I was a little confused at first. I thought, wow, what a great funky sound for the blues. And then I realized that that note that popped out of the top was actually the missing note I was looking for, which in cross our position is the flatted third up on top. That saxophone players and blues guitarists play. Everyone plays that, except harmonica, diatonic harmonica players couldn't play it, even though they wanted to. So I was pretty excited by this. And I'll show you how it works. The best way to prepare yourself to learn how to overblow, and oh, I called it overblowing because I didn't know what I had done, and I went to a saxophone player friend of mine. And I said, what am I doing when I go, and this high note pops out. He said, well, it sounds like you're overblowing a harmonic. And since I didn't know anything, I thought, oh, OK, I'm overblowing a harmonic, which is not what you're doing at all, as it turns out. But that's why I called it overblowing, and other people call it overbending, and you could call it what you want. So if you know how to bend eight blow very well, I went into this in the bending section. You have to get this thing real smooth. It's I, and if you move down to six blow and try to do the same thing, this note just pops out if you do it right. But there's a little bit more of a k involved because something different happens on this reed this pair of reeds than what happens on a blow bend. It's like saying k, k. And on a C harmonica, the k is a little further forward in the mouth than it would be on a B flat harmonica, an A harmonica, or a G harmonica. K. And I could say, OK, now all of you just go and do it. Except there's one very important thing that I will show in a close up later is that the reeds have to really be adjusted well to make this easy. I did it on harmonicas where the reeds were just random right out of the factory and uh, many of the older harmonicas you could do this on. I, I showed in my harmonica curiosity section that I could overblow on the harmonicas from 1910 and from the 1890s. I have never touched the insides of these. It works just fine. But to make it easier, you have to know how to adjust the action, which I'll show in a close-up later. It basically consists of pushing the reeds toward the reed plate as close as possible. And the, the draw reed is on the bottom. You can push it with your thumb. The blow reed is on the top. It's inside. You can push it up with a toothpick or a screwdriver, just to make it very basic and simple. Yeah.